Hi friends, it's Deanna here today and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be sewing up another free pattern. It's this beautiful top. It's the big uh, uh, sweater pattern from Mood Fabrics. I love the overlay. I chose to do the overlay version, but you can also just do a regular sleeve version. Um, and I also chose to add three inches to the length of my top because I did not want it to be a crop top. So take that into consideration if you want to make this top. It is a crop top style, um, and I added three inches, and you can see it still hits at high hip. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. I'm excited for this so Let's do it. All right, let's get started sewing the sweater. I've got my back and my front, and I'm gonna place them right sides together. I'm going to pl um, put together the bodice first by sewing the shoulders and the sides. Again, they're right sides together. I know it's kind of hard to see the wrong and right side with this fabric, um, but they're right sides together. If you noticed uh, when I was cutting my fabric, I added three inches of length to this piece. I wanted it, um, this uh, pattern is a cropped sweater top, uh, which is great, but I wanted a little bit of extra length, so I added um, three inches. Again, um, well, let me tell you this, I am 5'7", so usually for patterns, shirts, not so much, but usually for dresses or anything like that, I add an inch because of height. Um, but I added three inches because I really wanted it to be a little bit longer. I don't want it to be cropped. So let's sew those. I'm using a serger, but you can use um, stretch stitch on your sewing machine if you do not own a serger. For my neckband, I'm grabbing it and folding it right sides together, and I'm going to sew this short raw edge here. Attaching a neckband. I get a lot of questions about how to attach a neckband. So I'm going to show you really carefully how to how I do it. Um, the first thing is on my pattern, I did mark the front and the back. But if you don't have that mark on your pattern, that's the first thing you want to do. You want to match up the shoulder seams and go to the front and mark where the front is. See, I've got it marked already. I like to use like snips and do a little snip. I'll show you after. And then um, mark the back as well here. Go to the back. I've got it already marked. Now, once you've marked the front and the back, like I have here, you're going to match them up. Your shoulders are not your quarter points because your usually your front is scooped lower than your back. You want to make sure that you find those quarter points. See, it's about a half an inch away from my seam here, uh, but some tops are more than others. Some dresses or whatever, some necklines are more than others. So you want to make sure that you find that. And that's what I mean by a snip. I just do a tiny little snip that will get be, be eaten by my seam allowance. So it's small enough that when I sew my neckband on, it will be cut under the seam allowance. And I do the same on the other side. Once my neck is prepped, I'm gonna grab my neckband. My neckband has been sewn wrong sides together, I mean right sides together. And I'm gonna just clip this serger tail. You, it doesn't matter because you're going to sew over it, so it's going to get caught when you sew anyway. Now, one thing to do is to, before you even sew that seam right there, you it's easier if you have fabric that's very like um, unstable, not very kind. It's best to just go ahead and um, steam it folded to have this already this crease already on your fabric, and it helps keep it folded. Uh, I didn't do that step, but it's fine. But if you are dealing with fabric that just keeps moving on you or there's wrinkled or it's puckering or it's doing something like that giving it a steam right here at that folded halfway wrong sides together it's very very helpful so i'm going to here's my back seam i'm going to place my clip on my back seam and then i'm going to go to the front from the back so i'm just like literally folding it here at the back and going to the front and i'm going to mark that front uh point right here again i'm going to just clip a little snippy and I'm going to place a clip there to keep it together. The reason why this fabric doesn't really, it wouldn't really work if I steam it anyways is because it's like a Liverpool fabric. It's very slippery. It doesn't really hold its shape very well, which helps it to like stay straight, which I like. Anyway, I'm going to place front and back right together like so. And then I'm going to go to the sides and find my quarters. You may wonder why I'm doing the little snippies. Why not just clip it and that's okay? Because sometimes when you're sewing this on your sewing machine, your clips might come off 
And having the little snippies on your, <laughs> snippies, not really a word, having the snips on your fabric helps you to be able to pull it back to where it's supposed to be, even if you don't have the clip showing you where you're supposed to go. Next, we're gonna grab our neckband and we're gonna look at our bodice and make sure that you place it correctly. You see the front is usually lower than the back. As you can see right here, this is the front, this is the back. It's lower. Um, so you want that seam to be on the back. Um, I've done this many times where I've put a seam to the front and then I have to take it all apart. So make sure that you check on that seam right here. I'm gonna place that in the back where I have my middle piece, my back point. Then I'm going to go over here to the side and go to my first quarter I have here and match that up. I'm matching the neckband with my um, um, bodice neck, my neck, my bodice, my neck, um, right sides together. So the right side of the band, if this was your right side, what you want to show, you're going to attach that to the bodice because when you fold it open and you go to the right side, that's what's going to show. So whatever you have on the neckband on this side, if you have a design that you're like, oh, I want this to show, or it's one color on this side and another color on the other side, you said, this is the color I wanna show. This is the color that's gonna be touching the right side of the bodice. So next, I'm gonna place it on the front. So literally, we're just matching up those quarter points. And then the last quarter point. And now we're gonna head over to my serger and sew it. I'm going to be using the serger for this sew and you're gonna stretch lightly to match up the bodice and the neckband together at the raw edges. But you can use a stretch stitch on your sewing machine. I love to use like a zigzag stitch, a triple stitch, uh, something that's gonna give you some, um, some stretch so you can put this over your head later. All right, here we are at my serger and I like to start with that back seam S. Here's my back seam. So I'm gonna place it on my serger. I like to have my um, neckband facing up. Like I want to see the neckband because I want to see how much I'm going to cut off the neckband. Um, you don't wanna cut off too much and make it a very thin neckband. First thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab where that first quarter point is and I usually like to grab with my thumb and with my um, ring finger and just kind of clamp it together and then I like to have my middle finger and my index my pointer and that is going to grab latch on farther up so I'm stretching my fabric I'm stretching my neckband to fit be the same size as my bodice and I'm matching them at the um here where the raw edge is so I've got it pulled here grabbed here and then with this other hand I guide it and then I make sure that it's all together. Take your time so you can have that perfect neckband. I get to that quarter point, I remove my clip. I don't wanna break it or my pin or whatever I have. And then I go to the next quarter point and repeat the same process. When I get to the end, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm just gonna go right over that serge edge already and come right off. have gone over I just keep going pull it out and then I like to run over my serger with the knives uh, and then it just cuts it off and then I have this little tail right here that then I'll just tuck in burn however you want to get rid of that and now I've got a perfect neckband doesn't that look good all right now sleeves um, I've got my overlay because I'm working with an overlay as you can see this is my overlay here um, I'm laying it out I put this aside um, this is the top of the overlay this is the side this is the bottom it's kind of like a trapezoid as you can see right here the shape of it if you're having a hard time figuring out what the shape of it is like I am I'm like trying to figure it out yes okay that's what I thought it's this way so it goes, oh, here's my fold on this side. Yeah, it goes like this. So I was right. I just wanted to make sure I had it correctly and I wasn't um, looking at it the wrong way. Okay, so what we're going to do first with the overlay. Here's the overlay. I'm going to grab it and fold it right sides together at that raw edge. And I'm going to sew it together. Isn't this going to be beautiful? This overlay is so pretty. I know I've already had people ask me where I got this overlay from and I really do not know. I got it from a mystery box. I think it was so, so English um, or um, 
I think it was So So English or Sly Fox. I really do not know. It was years and years ago and I've kept it and I was so afraid to use it. But finally, I'm like, I'm going to cut into it because it needs to be used. It's gorgeous. So I'm going to sew that. Um, once I sew that, then I'm going to put in a gathering stitch at the top and at the bottom because I'm going to gather the top to fit my sleeve and then the bottom to fit my cuff. So I'm going to put that aside. And I'm going to do the same process with my under sleeve. This is the sleeve, the piece that goes under my overlay. Make sure that you're looking at the right way here. And I'm going to grab this one and also fold the right sides together. Oh, that's the wrong side. Fold right sides together on the outer edge for the sleeve. So I'm creating that sleeve right here. Now this is the bottom part of the sleeve and we're going to do the same thing to the top part of the sleeve in a minute. Oh man, I got all the little fuzzies of my overlay on here, which hopefully when I sew those edges, it will stop shedding. Now, like I said, for my sleeve, the top of my sleeve, we're going to do the same exact thing. So I'm opening my sleeve and I'm folding it right sides together at the side. Because once all that is put together, our overlay is gonna go over this middle sleeve and then this middle sleeve and our overlay is gonna get attached here to that main top sleeve. And then so it'd be this and then the overlay on top of this and then the cuffs. And we're also going to sew the cuffs, get them prepped. Now for the cuffs, I'm matching them right sides together and sewing the short raw edge. All right, now let's go sew all that and put in the gathering stitch at the top and bottom of our sleeve. I'm just doing a long, the longest stitch on my sewing machine, which is a five all the way around because this is really easy to gather. So then I'll put the bobbin thread and gather it to fit. Like I said, I'm changing my stitch to a five and now we're going to gather. You may wonder why I just did um, my serger on my sleeve, see, being that it's a woven. It's a mesh, so it'll catch really nicely on my serger. Plus, this is going to be above an underlay, so it's not going to get much rubbing or pulling or anything like that because it's very, it's looser. So that's why I just stuck with my serger seam. Usually, if I'm sewing woven, I will sew first with my sewing machine, do a straight stitch, and then finish the edge with a serger. So in case you were wondering about that, that's the reason why. So I'm going to go ahead and just put in a long stitch all along the bottom and the top of the overlay. I am about a quarter inch to an inch, I mean a quarter inch to a half an inch away from the edge. Um, it really doesn't matter. I'm going to pull it and then once I sew it on, I'll pull the basting stitch off so you won't see that later. If you have fabric that's kind of harder to gather, you may want to do two rows instead of just one. Leave a long tail at the beginning and the end of your sew. Alrighty, now we've got all the pieces ready to roll. We're going to start by attaching the overlay to this sleeve. So here's my sleeve. I'm going to turn it right side out. Here's my top, which is the wider part and the shorter, the slimmer parts down here. And I'm going to grab my overlay and turn it right side out as well. And here is my top. Now it's like the opposite for the outer. The smaller part is the top and the wider part is the bottom because it's going to cuff and be like a poofy situation here at the cuff, which will be really cute. I'm going to fit my sleeve right into my overlay. So it's the right side of the sleeve is touching the wrong side of the overlay. Look at that. That's going to be so pretty. Like I love how it, the colors of the flowers pop uh, when they're on the black background here. So what we're going to do is here, I'm matching up the seam here on the back for my overlay and my sleeve. And I'm just kind of just going to pin it here or clip it. And then I'm grabbing where I gathered. I'm going to grab my actually let me mark my half right here. So this is my half right here of my sleeve. This is how I like to gather so that it's even way. Just match it half and half right here. 
That way I know that I'm gathering half of it this way and half of it that way. Now I'm gonna pull on that basting stitch and that will gather my fabric. And then I'm gonna pull the basting stitch the other way too. And you wanna match up that raw edge with the raw edge of your sleeve, making sure the gathers are even. All right, once that's, this is the top of the sleeve. Once that's put together like that, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same for the other sleeve. And then we're going to attach this top to the top of our sleeve. Now, what you can do is you can go to your sewing machine and put in a basting stitch so that these two are basted together because sometimes it's kind of hard to sew them together. They might slip down. So, so it's easier if you do baste them together. Basting just means putting a long stitch where the, so these two are kind of attached by a, a little thin, thin stitch, kind of like the same as this stitch right here, um, that you can pull off later after you attach it. Now, I, um, I'm just a quick sewist. I'm just like, no, nah, I'm just going to go for it. And I have experience. I've done this many times. So I will just put this right on top and sew it without the basting stitch. But I might regret it later. So we'll see. I'm going to do the same to the other sleeve. And then I'm going to show you what I mean by attaching to that sleeve. All right. So that is put together there and there. Y'all, maybe I should go baste it because you know why this fabric might fold down and get lost on me. So I'm going to do the same for the bottom. Same thing. We're gathering to fit this bottom because then we're going to attach the cuff to the bottom. So you know what? I'm going to do the same to the bottom and then I am going to go ahead and just go baste them together. Stop being so lazy. Take the extra step so that way I don't end up mad and with a messed up project that I have to redo. Again, this is just a long straight stitch that I will pull off after I sew it together. So for this part, I had issues with my recording and I'm going to just have to tell you what I did. I grabbed the top of my sleeve and I turned it inside out so that the right side of the top of the sleeve, the bottom raw edge of that is touching the top of the bottom sleeve. So you're matching right sides together at that raw edge. So the bottom of the top sleeve and the top of the bottom sleeve, right sides together and you're going to sew around that. For my band, I folded it wrong sides together and marked my halves, and then I made it go into my sleeve bottom, and I matched the raw edges right sides together, making sure that my uh, bottom is gathered to fit all the way around my cuff. So if you need to pull it a little bit tighter to fit, you can do that, um, but if not, all you're doing is you're attaching your uh, band to the bottom, to the both right side edges of your um, cuff. So kind of like you did your neckband. We are almost done. The only thing left to do is to attach the sleeves and to look at that. Look at that and then to hem the bottom of the shirt. I'm going to turn my shirt inside out and I marked the back. See how this got this little notches, but you can always find the back because it's the lower on this top. So I'm going to grab my sleeve and I also marked the back of my sleeve. So as you can see right here, this is the back. So this one's going to go on this side. I'm going to fit this sleeve. I'll put this basting stitch out afterwards. So I'm going to fit this sleeve right in that arm side. And I'm going to match my inseam of the sleeve with the inseam of the bodice. Then I like to match the top of the sleeve. It's a little mark right there with the top of the seam. And as you can see, here's the match the back, the notches for the back. 
So I know that that's what they are and they're matched right sides together. And I am going to sew all the way around the arm, the shoulder and the front. So it's the arm side, all around this whole arm side, right sides together. All right, friends, we are to some of the last steps and I wanted to try on the top and make sure that everything looked good. I really, really love how this is gonna turn out, but I've got a couple of things. So we added um, three inches of length, which is great because even at the three added inches of length, it still hits at high hip and I still have not hemmed it. So I'm going to be hemming it, which is fine because I do like to wear high-waisted jeans and stuff like that. So it's gonna be a perfect length, I think. Second thing was the fact that I kind of don't like how much sleeve there is before it becomes um, the, the actual, um, uh, where the overlay is, but, since it's a little bit of a long longer sleeve there's a little bit of room what my solution is I am going to actually move this up about an inch so what I'm doing is I'm just gonna take it apart do the same cut off about a half an inch of the sleeve and then sew the sleeve back on um, at you know so it'll be an inch up because I'll do it at a, a half an inch seam allowance so then I'll, I'll take off a whole inch here at the top which will bring this sleeve up now I'm not going to show you doing all that because I'm really just doing the same steps I'm just shortening the sleeve so if you like it better with the shorter then I would advise you to just go ahead and shorten the sleeve before you even do the whole situation again I'm just shortening it about a half an inch um actually I probably would shorten it like three quarters of an inch and then sew up let me see yeah, I kind of want to take off like a whole inch. So maybe I'll just chop off a whole inch and then y'all can see, you know, what you think of it and then make up your own mind if you want it to be like it is. This is exactly how the pattern has it. This is how low it is. It's a little bit long right here, I feel like, or if you wanted to move it up like I did. But let me go ahead and do those things, finish up the hem, and then I'm going to show you what it turns out like. I'm so excited. All right, beautiful friends, we are done with our top. How good did this turn out? This fabric is gorgeous. This pattern was great to work with. I loved it. I did um, do the, the few little tweaks, and I think um, I if I was gonna make it again, I would go ahead and add those tweaks from the beginning, like adding the length. Um, I've got it tucked in, but this is how high it hits as it's hemmed now. I kind of like it this length because I like it to be higher, but if you want it to be more down to the hip, then you would even add more than three inches. I would say add five or six inches to the length uh, for the top. Also, um, at moving the sleeves up for me was a great um, way to bring this up a little bit and then shorten the sleeves and now they're the perfect length. I like the way that the shirt actually fits everywhere. The neckline fits great. Uh, the bodice fits great. I don't have any complaints about the fit other than the length of, and that's just personal taste because I know that this is supposed to be a cropped pattern um, and I am 5'7 so I am a little bit taller um, so usually I do add about an inch of uh, length to things that I sew up so this kind of works out that I added about two two and a half inches to it but anyway that's all I hope you enjoyed this tutorial please comment like share subscribe if you haven't come find me on Instagram at Eloise.Ezra where I share my behind the scenes everyday sews um, and we just share fun on there so come find me on there go grab this pattern it's free go download it and sew it up with me I hope you love it I hope you have a great rest of your day comment below and let me know um, what you're going to do if you're going to do the different things to this and also let me know if there's any free patterns that you're like I want to see you sew this up please sew it up for me and that might be my next video also comment below if there's any like things that you're like oh I would love for you to do a video on this or that um I'd love to hear from you I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you next time bye